Welcome to another edition of the Carolina Bay of the Day, where we study the secondary impacts made by the glacier ice boulders that were ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet. My goal is to investigate the physical mechanisms that created the bays. In this presentation, we will compare the Carolina Bays in Machipongo, Virginia, with the bays in Windsor, Virginia, which are separated by a distance of only 100 kilometers or 62 miles. You will find the link to the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth by Michael Davies in the description of the video. Pay close attention to this Carolina Bays. The image on the left shows elliptical bays with raised rims in Windsor, Virginia. The bays have been eroded, but the elliptical geometry is clearly visible. The image on the right shows the almost circular bays in Machipongo, Virginia. Windsor and Machipongo are separated by only 100 kilometers or 62 miles. This distance is going to be important for our analysis. Proponents of the Aeolian hypothesis of bay formation want us to believe that the Carolina Bays formed during the Pleistocene as shallow lakes and that the distinctive shape and northwest-southeast orientation of the bays developed through stronger than present southwesterly winds blowing over water ponded in shallow depressions. If we believe the Aeolian hypothesis, we would agree that southwesterly winds gave the Carolina Bays in Windsor their distinctive shape and northwest-southeast orientation. But then we have the conundrum that the Carolina Bays in Machipongo do not have the same elliptical shape. Didn't the wind blow as hard on the Machipongo Bays? Remember, these bays are only 100 kilometers apart. They are very close to each other, and the two areas were probably exposed to similar wind conditions. Since the shapes of the bays are so different, the hypothesis that the wind shaped them is obviously wrong. Otherwise, the bays would have similar shapes. An alternative to the Aeolian hypothesis is the Glacier Ice Impact Hypothesis, published in 2017, which proposes four mechanisms for the formation of the Carolina Bays. First, a meteorite impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet ejected glacier ice boulders in ballistic trajectories. The secondary impacts by the ice boulders liquefied on consolidated ground and produced the Carolina Bays. We will now see how this impact mechanism can create elliptical bays and circular bays based on terrain conditions, but independent of the action of the wind. The LiDAR image of the area with Machipongo, Virginia, has an interesting arc in the Chesapeake Bay. The arc makes a perfect circle that includes Machipongo. It turns out that 35 million years ago, a meteorite impacted the eastern shore of North America exactly at this point of the Chesapeake Bay. Until 1983, there was no evidence of a large impact crater buried beneath the lower part of the Chesapeake Bay and the surrounding peninsulas. The first hint was an 8-inch thick 20-centimeter layer of ejecta found in a drilling core taken off Atlantic City, New Jersey, about 170 miles or 274 kilometers to the north. The layer contained a fused glass beads called tectites and shock quartz grains that are unmistakable signs of an extraterrestrial impact. The scientists calculated that a bolide with a diameter of 3 kilometers impacted at a speed of nearly 60 kilometers per second, punching a deep hole through the sediments and into the granite continental basement rock. The bolide itself was completely vaporized, with the basement rock being fractured to depths of 5 miles or 8 kilometers, and a peak ring was raised around it. The deeper crater, 24 miles or 38 kilometers across, is surrounded by an outer edge of collapsed blocks forming ring faults. The crater was then buried by additional sedimentary beds that have accumulated during the 35 million years following the impact. For this reason, the ground in Machipongo is very different from the ground in Windsor, Virginia. Conical cavities cannot be made on ground that does not have sufficient depth of unconsolidated material. A conical cavity inclined at 35 degrees corresponding to a bay with a major axis of 400 meters requires an unconsolidated layer 140 meters deep. A model shows the formation of a penetration funnel and the subsequent decrease in the depth of the cavity by viscous relaxation. An ice projectile impacting a hard layer would disintegrate explosively and create a hemispherical shock wave in a circular crater like those in the Delmarva Peninsula. The model shows the disintegration of the ice projectile upon reaching the hard layer. A Carolina Bay near Machipongo, Virginia has a width of 1 km and a length of 1.4 km. It overlaps with a smaller bay on its east side. The bay is mostly open farmland, supported by both a natural drainage channel running toward the east and an extensive network of drainage channels leading to the natural channel. 
A railroad track runs across the bay, while US Highway 13 goes across the northwestern rim. Thank you for joining me in this investigation of the physical mechanisms that created the Carolina Bays that don't depend on the vague and untestable myths about the stronger-than-present winds. I will continue to examine the Carolina Bays one bay at a time. Please subscribe to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays.